thank you guys for being here today. Uh, in case you didn't know, my name is Heather Lehman, and I am the Region and Chapter Manager here at ARMA International, and uh, have been working real hard, we've been working real hard to bring you our brand new website, uh, so you can kind of see our front page here on my screen here as we're screen sharing. Um, but then also I've been focusing on really understanding this new groups area for your chapters and how it is that your chapter can collaborate and engage and work together uh, with that. So, uh, so we're going to dive into some of that area first. But uh, so kind of starting off, I wanted to make sure that everybody, so when you're on Arma dot, when you're on Arma.org, uh, on our front page here, you can sign in securely here on the front page, or you can click on a button up here at the top that says sign in. And it will take you to our member login page. And so you'll just need to put in your credentials and your password. And if you don't remember those, there is a password recovery that comes up at the very bottom there. Um, and so when you first log into your new ARMA account, it brings up a, um, it's called My Feed. And this is things that your connections have been doing. So it's a little bit like Facebook in that there's different posts and, um, and whatnot from your connections and people that you know and things like that. So, uh, and things that are going on within your group. So if you're a, a member of a certain group, uh, it will post here on your newsfeed for you to see. Uh, other different areas of the back end here are my career, which connects to our career site, your profile, so you can um, kind of control what it is that other people see. Uh, and what is it that uh, uh, kind of your own personal page and things like that. The member directory at the top here is the ARMA International Membership Directory, as well as uh, there's a box where you can view messages to and from different members and different groups and things like that. Uh, connections, you're able to make connections similar to kind of like a LinkedIn um, where you can, uh, where you have connections with different coworkers or different people in your chapter and things like that. And then finally, uh, okay, so the area we're gonna delve into in just a moment is the groups area. And that is a new area that is just specifically for our chapter members. So we're gonna get to that in just a moment though. I want to point out here too, so within our new area here, there's a way that you're able to control what type of communications you're getting and uh, your account settings and everything. If you click under your name, click on your name here and get that to, to that drop down. If you go to account uh, and settings, in this area, you'll be able to uh, control what type of uh, communications you get by email and when uh, the frequency of them and things like that. So under the account and settings here, uh, you're able to change your profile information. So let's say your email address changes or your title or something like that. Um, things like that, if they change, you can uh, control your profile that way. Uh, and information and settings, this is the area where you can control what type of communications you get emailed to you and how frequently those happen. So under the uh, information and settings and then preferences, this area right here controls how often you receive email messages or what type of email messages you get uh, from ARMA International. And I do want to point out real quick that a uh, new member, it, as being a chapter leader, you're used to getting information about new members joining your chapter. That setting is now in this area right here. So if you're in the information and settings area under preferences, you need to look at the email me when someone joins a group of which I am a member. Having this area uh, selected right here, this means that it will, e the, um, that ARMA will email me when someone new joins my chapter. Because uh, in our new area, chapters are akin to groups. Uh, our groups and, and chapters were kind of, they, the, the database uses the word groups as kind of a generic uh, 
kind of term and all of our chapters are now groups uh, within this area. So in the group setting here, if you want to receive a new email message about, um, if you want to receive a new email message about all or about some, if someone new has joined your group, um, email me when someone joins a group of which I'm a member. You want to take a look at that setting right there. After you've looked at all of those, you want to make sure to go down to the bottom and save the settings. But down here as well, you can also subscribe to how often you receive these communications. Uh, do you want a daily update? Do you want a weekly update? Um, what type of, how frequently do you want those communications? And you can control those yourself. At the end, in order to apply everything, make sure you save my settings. And then your preferences have been saved so that you're able to uh, continue uh, receiving the messages the way that you want to. So we're gonna delve into um, this groups area from here. Uh, our groups area here, this is our brand new area just for chapters. And this is where we're gonna spend quite a bit of our time here today. In the center of the page here, you'll see that uh, there is, these are the chapters or groups that you are a member of. So at this time, I'm a member of the Greater Kansas City chapter as well as this test chapter in which the, uh, we're gonna kind of delve into this more. Uh, so these are the chapters in which I'm a member of, and then any available groups that are available to join are on the right-hand side. So you can click on the, those and, and find out a little bit more about those. But today we're just gonna delve into our current chapter. So let's go into our test chapter and take a look around for a minute. So we have our test chapter here just to kind of be able to show some, uh, some of the areas that we've got. When you click into your test chapter, when you click into your chapter here, there's a center page here. This is called uh, your group feed page. And this is uh, basically a, re a little bit kind of like the my feed profile where things that have been happening within the chapter. So um, the group feed here shows that I put some pictures up last week. Um, Andrea is enjoying being part of the group, um, pictures and things like that, creating events, um, putting com uh, posting comments and things like that. Those things will show up in the middle of the page here on the, on the group feed, uh, which is nice. So that's kind of a, an automatic thing. At the top here, there's some navigation that every member is able to get to. The directory is going to be for just chapter members. And let's click on that real quick. So our directory search within our group here this is just for group members. So these, this uh, group directory just so shows chapter members of our test chapter. <clears throat> so, uh, and you can look for certain people by name and, um, or it also lists them and, and whatnot. There's a, at the top left-hand corner here, there's always gonna be the group home page and you're able to navigate back to your, uh, back to your welcome page, the first page of your chapter. It's kind of the main page. Within your main page here, there is a welcome area, and this can be controlled by a group admin. So there are two different uh, permissions within the group. There is a regular group member, and then there's a group admin portion as well. Um, and at this time, all chapter presidents have been made a group admin, kind of by default, um, just to be able to control this area. And if your chapter would like to have more group admins added to your group, you can email us at, here, I'll put it in here. It's chapters at, you can email us at that uh, address that I just chatted out. So chapters at armaintl.org. Uh, you just need to request uh, that you want access or that uh, your chapter you'd like to have certain people be uh, have access and things like that. So uh, chapter presidents have been made the a group admin by default for right now. And if they would like to have more uh, admins, please just let us know that. 
uh, because as we go on today, I will be, uh, I'll describe a little more about what those permissions include uh, as they are different from a regular chapter member. So, but as regular chapter members, we have, everybody has access to um, the directory, the calendar, blogs, forums, pictures, uh, and any custom pages that may be created. Uh, and as a regular member, they see a welcome message here at the top. So, and that welcome message can be customized by the group admin. So, um, but let's continue walking through the, the different features that regular chapter members see. Uh, so there's the directory that they have access to. There's the calendar feature where they'll be able to see any group meetings or events that the uh, administrator has posted. Um, and I do want to caution this area right here. The wording here in this uh, area has to be the same as what we have on our ARMA International page. So uh, I caution you guys to read carefully. Uh, submit items for ARMA Internet or for ARMA's calendar here. This link right here in the middle of the page goes to ARMA International's calendar. And so when you click on this link uh, here, that will take you to the submission page for ARMA International's calendar. If a group is wanting to create an event just for their chapter, that it, that's totally okay, but it has to be the group administrator that will that processes that. And um, I'll show you how to do that through the admin feature here in just a moment. So creating, uh, so here, yeah, submit events for your chapter group page. Please contact the administrator to have that um, under manage events. So. So if you'd like to create chapter meetings to show up down here, an admin does have to do that. Uh, other areas that chapter members have access to is the blogs and our forums area. And both of these are also controlled by the group admin. So the group admin can create blogs and uh, put out test blogs to, or put out uh, blogs and um, different questions in the forum area so that members can read them and, um, and interact with them and, uh, and interact with the different posts and things like that. So have the topics. But the topics and the posts as the, of the blogs do have to be initiated by the group admin. Um, photo albums are able to be uh, looked at by everybody and, um, and uh, kind of just some uh, test pictures there uh, and submit pictures to uh, your group admin can add new pictures and submit pictures and things like that. And group admins also have the ability to create custom pages where you can um, house different documents if you'd like everybody to see. Um, so just for an example here, I put November and October. If you had meeting minutes uh, from those meetings, you can uh, put them on this page and have them available to all of your chapter members. A summary of, uh, of the events of what happens within those does show up within the group feed. So uh, when new pictures are added and when people comment on them, things like that will show up in the group news feed here. As well as um, the group events uh, up at the top there, here is also a way to advertise those events um, so we've got a, just a test chapter meeting coming up, um, blog posts that are available, forum activity, um, and those were also at the very top of the page. So they're all listed out here in the center of the page uh, if you'd like as well. And then finally at the bottom here, this group news area, this will be information that is pushed out to all chapter members from ARMA International. Um, so if there's important information coming from ARMA International, we'll push out some information to you guys through that area. But it, this group news isn't just to chapter um, administrators, it's to everybody in a chapter. So it's a way to kind of communicate with everybody for, in a chapter. And so that is uh, pretty much what regular chapter members are gonna be able to see and interact with. And uh, as I've kind of said uh, a few times that there is uh, a group admin feature as well. And the chapter presidents have been made group admins. 
And uh, if you'd like other group admins, you can let us know. But the group admin has a lot more capability to uh, this page. And you'll have a, a group admin will have this button up here at the top, the uh, admin feature here. If you're a regular chapter member, you're not going to have that access and you're not going to have that button. Um, regular chapter members will just have the actions button here uh, on the side. So, but before we get into the actions button, I do want to kind of review, let's uh, review some of the uh, features of the group admin here. Okay, so Kevin is asking, is there a recommended web browser? Um, so, uh, Internet Explorer or Chrome when accessing the website. The uh, preferred uh, website, I'm using Chrome right now, which uh, seems to work fine, but I think the recommended ac uh, web browser is actually Firefox. Yep, there, here we go. Yep. So I'm actually using Chrome right now, just that's um, what I logged in at. Um, and it's kind of my default, but Firefox is the preferred browser. So thank you for jumping in there, Nate. They all work though, uh, and, and Nate did say it did, has put that. So I'm using Chrome just because that's my personal preference, but um, they all work. Uh, so under the group admin here, I want to go over a few of these options. The home options and home layout. This is where you'll be able to control a little bit of the look and feel of the um, of the group. And so, like that, uh, the welcome message that I have on the front there, you're able to control that here. So welcome to the test chapter um, group page, uh, or you know, welcome to the X chapter page, something like that. So you're able to kind of put a description uh, there of what, of what your chapter um, is looking to do and things like that. So there's a 500 character limit and uh, within this system here too, it will tell you if there are character limits and size limits and things like that. So um, as you go along. So the home uh, homepage options, you can uh, customize your welcome message. You can also customize the group features uh, and turn them on or off. So if you don't want anybody to have access to the forums area, uh, you're able to turn that off as a group administrator in this area. Um, and then there's also more, uh, you can upload some files and upload some pictures. Um, in order to put that on your welcome home text and things like that. So, so to play around with some of that and, uh, and see those changes there, um, you can make it, you know, different fonts and things like that. So, but make sure to save your changes at the end. There's also under the home page layout, this uh, area here controls the different, the layout of what your members see on that first page. So right now I have chosen the right column where uh, most of the news feed and, uh, and boxes and uh, welcome and uh, updates and things like that are all on the right, uh, are all in the main content zone on the right or on the left. And then um, there's a right rail uh, that has uh, short uh, kind of things. And you're able to kind of pull, uh, pull these and uh, kind of nav pull, uh, pull them around and things like that. So if you want that happening over there, um, and group reps or something like that over here, things like that. If you wanna kind of change those around, you're able to do that. And then you're able to save your changes at the bottom there if you would like. I am not gonna save those changes right now just because I'm not exactly sure what I just did. So, um, so you're able to kind of customize that. Like I said a little bit earlier and showed, uh, we do have a custom pages option and administrators are able to uh, create custom pages for their groups. Um, so you can uh, come to this page, you can add a new custom page um, to be able to share with your group. We're not able to lock this down in any way, shape or form. So if you create a custom page, it's going to be viewable by, by everybody in your chapter. Um, and it is only chapter members who have access to your group here. So um, so there's that, uh, you're able to create pages to, uh, custom pages to uh, give to your members and get, uh, be able to transfer information. If you're looking for a way to attach files to those custom pages, the resource manager here is where you will upload those files 
that you're able to put onto your custom pages. Um, and so you'll upload those files here and, uh, and you're able to keep, I think it's 10 files at a time. <clears throat> uh, and it does have some size restrictions. So as uh, you're uploading files and things like that, you'll have to manage some of that content within the resource manager here. Um, they're asking, uh, I'm getting a question from someone to uh, go over the file library. This is an area that you're able to collect um, documents and uh, have in a collaborative mode. Uh, but this area here is only for chapter admins. It is not for uh, the general public. It's not for the general uh, uh, pages. So um, you can sh you can share some of these uh, some of the documents and things like that once on a custom page after you've uh, done that. But this is only available to um, group admins. And yes, there is a an FAQ uh, on uh, our chapter administration page of our chapter central site. We have some information on the group features here. We have some information for uh, members of the chapter and then also uh, features uh, FAQs for the uh, for group admins. So, and the FAQ that uh, Nate just posted, he that said that is for the general website. So, but uh, there are some FAQs for the back end area here, uh, and that is on our chapter central site. And I will. There we go. Uh, our chapter central, uh, this site, this page right here has FAQs for the back end of the groups area here. Uh, there's uh, under the manage events here, this is also, this is where you will uh, be able to add chapter meetings and uh, events that are shown on your group, um, on your group page here. So if you're wanting to add more or add, uh, if a group admin is, or someone is wanting to add a chapter meeting or an upcoming event of some type, you would add that under the manage events. And you can add a new date or a new event um, to the category here. So let's just do um, so let's just say we're having a meeting on Friday at 12 o'clock PM and it's going to last until Friday at one o'clock PM. Uh, so you're able to show what date displays, um, event time, uh, you're able to set this as a reoccurring meeting if it's daily, weekly, monthly, or none at all if it's one uh, area. You're able to uh, put down the name of the presenter, uh, the location of where it is, uh, address, all of that here. But I wanted to also point out um, this area here, enable online registration. The through your membership, which is who powers our uh, this group here, we are able to take RSVPs on events in your group. So if you click yes, you do have the option to kind of go through this area here and gather registrations. Um, but I do want to uh, warn you, we do not have a, a payment set up for this. So if you're gathering registrations, it's just a are you coming or are you not um, type of thing. Uh, we do not have any type of uh, payment set up for any of this, um, for any of these events. Uh, so by clicking on this uh, registration event category, um, it is not, there's not payment uh, gathered with that. So, but there are, you're able to set if you have like a max of 100 people and they have to register by Thursday or something like that, 
And you can also send out reminders, you know, one day in advance, that type of thing. <coughs> so there's different options to help you manage some of those events. And then you can see, uh, you know, do you want the registration list uh, visible? Do you not want it visible? Who do you want it visible to? And then you're also able to uh, control what it is, um, what information you're putting out there and, uh, and whatnot. Uh, if you do have an event that you do need to pay for, you can put a link in this area that will reroute someone to a different page. To, an, to outside of uh, this group area here. So, uh, so there is that option to put the online registration instructions there. And they're also able to customize the thank you page after registering and all of that stuff. So, so play around a little bit with that. We'll go ahead and create our new event. So there we go. So we have our test meeting um, set up there. So. And this area here, the manage events area, is only accessible by the group admin. So, uh, so the group admin is able to do that. Other areas, we're able to view photos and manage photo albums. So if you have some photos from an event that you want to see or um, have taken at an event, you're able to you know, create a new album about that event and upload pictures and submit pictures here. So, uh, or view the albums and um, uh, view all of those pictures. Our blogs area, uh, these are the blogs that are available, uh, and it has to be an admin that starts off that blog. The blog area does need to be, a blog does need to be created by an admin before any chapter members are going to be able to comment or um, engage in some way, shape, or form with those. So blog posts are generally an article or um, you know a, a longer piece of uh, of writing or something that uh, that people can comment on and um, afterwards do short comments on the forums are a little bit different. The forums are intended to be short questions where members engage with uh, with each other through those questions. So in order to, uh, in order for members to interact with each other on those different questions, as an administrator, you do need to set up those categories um, and, uh, and create categories, add new, for add new forums, things like that, in order to put that out there. Um, so let's take a look at the forums area here. I have one area there. Uh, with a test forum and it's asking what is a forum. So it's best to kind of start off with a question and, um, and then looking at that uh, question. So what is a forum? Members are able to discuss topics with each other and people will be able to reply in this area and, uh, and reply back and forth and see what uh, each other is saying about that topic. So forums are great for different uh, thought provoking questions and things like that. And here we're going to get into uh, helping to manage some of the membership of your chapter now uh, and being able to see who is a member of your group. So we went to, we first went to this view current members area here. This is uh, an area where you as an administrator for your group can view all of the people that are a member of your chapter currently. Um, in addition to that membership directory, this is uh, where anybody in your group will see what the um, see who's in your group, and then as an administrator, you will see uh, you'll see not only who's in your group, but you have a few more permissions than other people do. Um, there's a question asking: Is there a limit to the number of admins you you can assign your chapter? And no, there is not a limit on the number of admins your chapter can have. So. Uh, so if you'd like, you know, multiple people to have access to that, then that's fine. Uh, within the view, uh, view current members uh, area here, there is a, there's a couple of things that as an admin, you have the permissions to do. This uh, remove from group area here, this not only removes someone from the online presence 
uh, of your group, but it actually removes them from your group membership, from your chapter membership as well. So it means that uh, if you're removing them from the group here, you're removing them from your chapter membership. Uh, so it, if you remove somebody from the group here, uh, let's go ahead and Carrie's on the line. So we're just going to go ahead and Carrie, we're going to remove you for a moment. So we're going to remove Carrie. The, there, anytime you're doing some kind of action like this, there is going to be a confirmation box that comes up that are you sure that this is what you want to do? Okay. So it does uh, double ask you that uh, question. So we've removed Carrie from our group. And now we see that Carrie is no longer a part of our chapter here. But uh, so if Carrie has maybe moved to a different city and is now a part of um, a different chapter, we're able to help facilitate some of that. Uh, so let's say someone new has, let's say Carrie's now moved to our area and uh, wants to join our chapter, or uh, we want to make her part of her, our chapter uh, without paying dues. We're able to search entire community up here. This is going to be searching Arma's entire database. So we're going to take her first name and her last name, and we're going to search for her. So we found Carrie, and we're going to add her to our group here. Since she's already a member of ARMA International through the entire community, we're able to add her to our chapter. And it does ask us, are we sure we want to add this person? Because when we're adding this person here, we are giving them chapter membership without creating an invoice. So we say, yes, we want Carrie to be a member of our chapter. So very good. So. Let's go back and refresh this page. And we can see that we now have Carrie back in our group here. So this area here, we're able to, uh, pay, uh, we're able to add members to our chapter, but I do want to caution you, doing the, uh, adding someone in this area does not create an invoice and it does not um, create any kind of payment. To your chapter. There's no chapter dues that are collected uh, by doing this, uh, by adding someone to your chapter in this area. You are uh, adding them to your chapter without any dues payment at that time. Uh, but you are adding chapter membership to their uh, profile. So when it comes time for them to renew their membership next, it will be uh, on their, your chapter will be on their renewal form. So they'll pay their dues at the next chapter, uh, at the next time that they renew. Does that make sense? I hope so. Yeah. Um, and someone asked if, if this is being recorded. Yes. This session is being recorded. Uh, so we'll make this available to everybody at the end. Uh, and we're also, uh, I think I'm going to run a couple more demos um, in the next month within February. Uh, we'll go through another couple of them uh, as well. So we'll have a couple of more of, the, of these before the end of the year. Um, and if you're uh, also, if you're not sure of what to do and uh, have a lot of questions, uh, we may be able to kind of schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment and kind of go through some of this with you guys. So uh, just let us know if we can make that work for you, but we're going to do some scheduling of, uh, of some more of these later on in the semester, or not semester, but through the course of the spring. So, so adding and removing people from a group. And this is not a popular option, guys. I'm going to tell you right now. Every member has this actions button at the top here. Let me go to the group home so I can kind of get up. So in the actions button right here, all members of your group have this option to leave the group. Um, not only is this leave group option leaving the online presence of your group, but it's also canceling the chapter membership. So I do want to caution any uh, of your of your members. If you hear somebody who was like, oh my gosh, I just couldn't handle the online thing. I went to leave group 
there is a question that pops up, are you sure you want to leave this group? Um, and so by hitting submit here and, and leaving this group, they are canceling their chapter membership. Okay. One way to kind of help fix this, if this happens accidentally, is to go to the, uh, have an administrator go to the current membership and you can add that person back in, uh, in this area here. Um, so if an administrator uh, can fix it, or if, if you let us know at the office, if someone has accidentally left your chapter, we can fix that for you guys. We can uh, help, help you fix that, or a chapter administrator can fix that as well in this area. So I just wanna caution that the actions item, we do have an item to leave group, and that is something that cancels the chapter membership. But it's fixable, we can do that, or we can fix that. The view, Pending members uh, is an area here. If there is somebody who has um, gone online and selected your chapter to uh, become a member of them, but they haven't paid their payment yet, uh, the invoice is out there and, uh, and they're wanting to become a member, but they have not completed that payment yet, this is where information about that member would show up. A lot of people pay by credit cards, but some people still pay by checks and things like that. So in this area here is where you would see people who we have who have registered online, but they've chosen to pay by check or something like that. And so uh, their membership is not totally complete yet. The view membership log, this area shows um, what type of um, activity has been happening within your membership you know, who's joined and who's uh, renewed, who's been added, who's removed, things like that. Um, and I, but I caution you as you're looking at this area, if there's any information prior to December 16th, I would disregard anything prior to December 16th. Um, the December 16th was when uh, was the date of our changeover uh, from our old database to here. So uh, pretty much anything before that was just kind of testing and getting things uh, in order and things like that. So after December 16th, um, 2017, anything after that point here is, is uh, live action um, information for your chapter, but anything prior to that was, uh, you know, importing and testing and uh, trying to make sure that things were working. So not live data at that point. We also have a way for uh, you to view who is in your chapter. So uh, under export group members is the option to download a list of everybody who's in your chapter. So we've got the directory option a couple of places. Now you're like, okay, that's great. But we also have, you know, we use constant contact or something like that. And we need information to be able to export to our members in a different way. So under that export members uh, area there, you're able to, um, are you guys able to see my Excel spreadsheet? I just pulled that up. I think you should. So you can, you can download that uh, through Excel and be able to see who is all in your chapter there and pull up that list. Oh, okay. No. Give me one second while I fix that then. Do desktop. Okay. I think you should be able to see the Excel spreadsheet now. Let me run back to that. So as we're in the admin here, if we go to export group members, we should see another pop-up window uh, come up. So make sure you have your pop-up windows um, setting uh, set correctly. And I'll say, do you want to, ex uh, are you ready to uh, click here to download? So you're able to download this file and then open it. And it will show who is a member, uh, it'll show the information of uh, of the people that are in your chapter. And these are your chapter members at this time. <clears throat> so it'll have all of the, it'll have all of their information in here. So that's one way to export uh, members information. If you're looking at, we do, we are currently working on 
some more reports that'll be available to you guys. Uh, the export group members is a kind of lack of another word, it's kind of a canned um, report that's provided by uh, our database here. But this available reports area here is an area that we are still currently in the process of, of uh, getting this uh, for every chapter. We are in the process of writing a chapter roster for every chapter. And in this area here, you'll be able to also download a copy. So you'll be able to view a copy of your chapter roster. And this will have some specific information on here that is uh, similar to the rosters that we used to send out um, at the beginning of every month. So we're still in the process of writing this for every chapter. So if you don't see it for your chapter yet, it will be completed by the first of, the, of, uh, of February. So kind of by the end of this week, uh, be looking for more information on that. That'll be available in your available reports area here. But we do have to write this report individually for every chapter. So some of you on the line will have it, some of you may not. Um, just kind of bear with us on that. But after you're uh, able to, or after you go there, you're able to download this um, in this area here. You're either able to print it or um, export it into a CSV format. And my computer is going to wait for a second while I'm exporting. Uh, and I, I'm pulling this open so that we can take a look real quick at the uh, column names, because those have changed a little bit. Um, in the next chapter connections, we're currently working, I'm trying to get together a page where we sh uh, can show the, uh, what these are uh, named. The constituent ID, uh, as you can see right here, uh, these numbers, are the numbers, the constituent ID refers to the membership number that a member had in our previous database. So uh, this is the number that was in our previous database. But um, when we switched on uh, December 16th, anybody who's joined after that point will not have a, anybody who joined after that point will not have a constituent ID. Um, because this was only created, the, these numbers were created in our old database and we are only holding them here to help with um, the historical aspect of that information. So some chapters have uh, everything tied around this number. So we do provide this to you as, uh, as something that uh, from our old database uh, as uh, what that is. Um, but we do have a new number for everybody that will be created and it is called the website id this number is uh, a brand new number that will be made that will be created for each person in our new database so this is our the basically the membership number out of our new database so i'm i keep highlighting carrie here because she joined our staff on december 18th um, the date registered is the date that they joined ARMA uh, at, uh, and at this time. So you can see that Carrie joined ARMA on December 18th, and so she does not have a constituent ID, but she does have a website ID. And that is, so this is the new membership number that will be created in, uh, out of, coming out of the new database. And this is going to be on an FAQ sheet that will be highlighted in the chapter connections that will come out the first of next week. Um, so just kind of letting everybody know some of this information there. I don't need to save that right now. So, uh, so these, the additional reports area here, we're currently working on providing these to everybody, um, to every chapter. And so some chapters have them now as we've been able to kind of write some of them, but we are in the process of writing them for every chapter. So, uh, it is uh, not quite available yet. And um, you may see the non-chapter member report. This is going to be the 099 member report. So as you know, 099 members are people that are members of ARMA International, but they're not members of your chapter. 
So we are currently in the process of trying to make this work as well, the non-chapter member report um, by region. I don't think that it's completely working um, yet, but we're, we're in the process of getting that to work. So uh, I'm again hoping that by February 1st, we'll have that working for everybody. So uh, that is all of the different areas that I know of. Does anybody have any questions? I'm gonna quickly kind of look through some of the questions that have been asked here to see if I've gotten everybody. Okay, so it's asking, will the chapters receive monthly membership rosters? Uh, no, at this time, uh, the monthly membership rosters are not going to be emailed out. The, uh, they're available at any time in this area here. Uh, so when every time that you come to this, uh, the chapter roster and download this, this is going into our database and it's pulling real information. So it's real time information as to who is in your chapter at that moment in time. So you're able to do this at any point during the month and we are not gonna be sending out any membership reports anymore. Um, but we will send out some instructions on how to access this. Uh, same with the 099 member report. As soon as this is, as soon as we get this to work correctly, it will, um, it will pull data from our database every time you pull it. So, um, and any other reports that we sh that Arma shares with you will now be uh, shared in this area here, uh, at least membership wise. So uh, chapter escrow and things like that, we're still working on some of those, uh, but that will be communicated in a different way. <clears throat> okay, so it's asking, why does this message appear when I'm trying to access another chapters group? Oh, it says private group, uh, there's a fee to join. So. Uh, the message is asking, they're trying to access somebody else's group. The group is only accessible if you are a member of that chapter. <clears throat> so you have to be a member of that chapter in order to, uh, to access that group. There is a fee to join. Um, and so if you're, you're able to join, uh, people are, uh, members are able to join a chapter at the time that they sign up for membership, at the time that they join, or at the time that they're renewing their membership, they're able to add on chapters online. Um, but if you have someone who wants to join and pay for uh, a membership between those two times, if, if you're in the middle of their membership year, uh, they're gonna need to contact uh, our membership team in order to do that. Uh, so signing up for a chapter in, bet in between um, membership dates is not available any longer. And so we're going to have to do that for, for you uh, on the back end. Okay, so someone's asking about a group rep position. Um, if we go back to our group home here, uh, so we've got the group reps are akin to the um, uh, the chapter officers. So like I've put myself as, a, I just put myself as president for our test group here. But if you have someone that like your president and your treasurer um, and, and whatnot would be listed there as well. Uh, and she's asking that there is someone who is incorrect in that area. If you find that someone is incorrect in that area, please email uh, chapters, yes. Uh, so they're asking if you email chapters at, that is where, um, Yeah, so email chapters at armaintl.org and we can correct that for you. Uh, so if there's something that's incorrect with the group rep uh, position or person, um, something like that, please let us know and we'll get that corrected. Any other questions? Great, okay. Um, again, if you have questions that pop up, please email us at chapters at 
uh, A-R-M-A-I-N-T-L, uh, and myself, Carrie, Liz, uh, willing to kind of go over those things with you and, uh, and kind of walk you through it or uh, help you in some way, shape, or form. So uh, please email us your, email us your questions um, so that we can make those more clear. And as we're going along, we're able to take some suggestions on the FAQs. We're going to be revamping those this week so that uh, the chapter connections will have some more FAQs and things like that. So, um, so let us know what kind of questions you have and, uh, and we'll try and make that as clear as we can. So uh, thank you guys so much for being here today. Have a wonderful day.